Hacking is considered very difficult, but we made a cheap device that made it easy. This device can automatically hack any Wi-Fi network, even if it's password protected. To do this, the attacker just needs to be nearby. Meet Ponagotchi, from the words Pone and Tamagotchi. This is a self-made, open-source, simple and cheap device for hacking Wi-Fi networks. Oh, and it has a fun digital pet inside. Let's see what it's made of and how it works. This video was created by SumSub, the verification platform. We make the digital world people-friendly, yet secure. Well, how do hackers assemble it themselves? It's not so difficult to put all the parts together. Firstly, we need a single board computer, the Raspberry Pi Zero W. It only costs about $15 and can be purchased on the internet. We plug Raspberry Pi into the power supply for $19.56. Then we plug the screen into the connector on the board. Honogotchi uses an e-link display that can be bought for approximately $9. Unfortunately, the shipping company seems to have dropped an elephant on our parcel in transit. Because when we unpacked the box containing the power unit, we found that the micro USB connector and the battery connector on the board were damaged. It doesn't work. That's why we use the small power bank to power up our Ponogotchi. Finally, we need a fast micro SD card to put the operating system on it at a minimum of 8GB capacity. Anything for about a dollar will be good. When the hardware is assembled, we need to download firmware from Ponagotchi project website and write it to an SD card using Bellina Etcher program. Once the firmware has been written on the SD card, we access it on the computer, open the boot folder and create a configuration file called config.toml. In this file, we will need to specify the virtual pet's name, screen type, and the names of our home Wi-Fi networks. Otherwise, Ponagotchi will hack them. The preparations are complete. We connect the Ponagotchi to the computer with the cable. Raspberry Pi Zero has two USB ports, one for power only and one for data. You should use the second. We need to configure the IP address, subnet mask, and gateway for SSH access to the device. Complete. Now, just power up the Ponagotchi and the device will work automatically. So you may think that this device is like a cheap version of Flipper Zero, as it also embodies a pixel art dolphin virtual pet, but it's not. Flipper Zero contains many hacking tools and various applications can be installed on it, and it requires button control. Ponagotchi is only made for one thing, hacking Wi-Fi networks. But this device is completely automatic. All you have to do is switch it on and let it do it all by itself. Let's conduct an experiment and check it out. To hack a wireless network, even a password protected one, an attacker with Ponagotchi simply needs to be within range of the network. Oh, a new wireless network? Pwned. The information intercepted by Ponagotchi is transmitted to a program that picks up the passwords. By collecting handshaking hashes and recovering passwords, an attacker can connect to your wireless network. They can get all the files from shared folders and access the internet through your channel and access the devices connected to your network. There is also a pet rating on the project website, kind of like a Pokemon Go for hackers. How exactly does Ponagotchi work? When an access point and a device establish a Wi-Fi connection, they exchange special data packets called a handshake in the WPA or WPA2 wireless protocol. Imagine that your phone connects to your home Wi-Fi network. Before it can securely send and receive data to and from the access point, the WPA encryption keys must be generated. This process involves the exchange of four packets between the client device and the access point. These are used to derive the session keys from the access point's Wi-Fi password. Once the packets have been successfully exchanged and the keys have been generated, the client device is authenticated and can begin to send and receive secure and encrypted data. The WPA handshake is transmitted by the client in the second message of the four-step handshake process. The content of this packet is hashed 
and it serves as proof to the access point that the client knows the PSK shared key. Ponagotchi intercepts and stores such packets. This material is collected on an SD card as PCAP files containing any form of crackable handshake. Then a hash can be used to find the password, using a special dictionary on a computer using Hashcat software, or with special online services such as online hash crack. Ponagotchi uses BetterCap, a special tool for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, wireless HID hijacking, IPv4 and IPv6 networks reconnaissance, and MITM attacks. To collect as many authentication packets as possible, Ponagotchi can use two methods. The first one is deauthenticating the clients. If the client device receives a disconnect signal, on reconnection it must repeat the four-step handshake and the packet may be intercepted. The second one is sending association frames directly to the access points to try to force them to leak the PMK ID. The most interesting thing is that the Ponagotchi is powered by artificial intelligence. It uses AI model actor advantage critic to teach itself and enforce hacking Wi-Fi networks. The device makes funny faces that show its mood. If Ponagotchi said that it's bored, it must be fed immediately. To do this, we need to take the Ponagotchi to a place where there are lots of Wi-Fi networks to hack. The more practice it gets, the faster Ponagotchi will crack new wireless networks. Ponagotchi doesn't have any controls. It works automatically. All information about the operation of the device is displayed on the screen. The screen displays a different information. Also, it shows the special message when another person with a Ponagotchi is nearby. The virtual pet can show the different faces. Sleeping. This is the state the unit will start from. Moreover, from time to time, your Ponagotchi will also perform naps of a few seconds while hopping among Wi-Fi channels. Awakening. The unit is in its last seconds of its nap. Normal. This face is the neutral awake status of the unit. Observing. The Ponagotchi is waiting and observing what BetterCap can find on all the channels it's hopping on. Intense. The unit is sending an association frame to an access point in order to force it to leak the PMK ID. Cool. The unit is deauthenticating a client station from an access point. Happy. Your Ponagotchi is happy for some reason. And so on. The user can customize the faces set by editing one of the system files. The device has a fairly simple user interface. By looking at your pet's face and the information on the screen, you can tell exactly what your device is doing right now. So how can you protect yourself? The first thing to look out for is, of course, the presence of a suspicious person near your equipment with a suspicious device in their hands. Use a strong network password for your Wi-Fi and keep an eye on the clients connected to the network. This rule can be applied to any situation, from Wi-Fi networks to your social media and bank accounts. However, and even then, there is a chance that criminals will hack into your account and abuse it. Hi, this is Lucas from SumSup, and today we're gonna look at how fraudsters can impact businesses by taking over user accounts. Say, for example, you're a car sharing company. Many of your clients register just for a single ride, maybe several, but then forget about their account. Sometime later down the line, a fraudster can get these credentials and abuse the service in someone else's name. You might try to get back in contact with the customer who, in reality, isn't even aware of the situation. And yet, all of this could have been avoided if your car sharing company implemented a fraud prevention system in the first place, which would have spotted any of the suspicious activity at a much earlier stage. Fraud prevention systems can detect suspicious activity, such as unusual IP addresses, new device logins, and then conduct additional checks if necessary. SumSub provides such a solution, allowing companies to request biometric and liveness checks from their customers to verify their authenticity. If you would like to learn more about fraud prevention solutions and SumSub in general, click that link in the description below. If a suspicious new device appears on your network, This is a reason to change the password. Each wireless and network device has a unique MAC address. The best defense is to configure your wireless network so that only devices with pre-allowed MAC addresses on a whitelist can connect to it. This measure will protect your network not only from the attack described above, 
but also from a number of other attacks that involve connecting a hacker's device to the wireless network. Well, we at SumSub are always here to help you satisfy your curiosity safely and survive in the online jungle. Till next time.